Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. So in this video, we'll talk about Verizon. This is a stock that Warren Buffett holds about 50, 159 million shares in his portfolio. This is currently his sixth largest position and it's valued at about $9 billion. So before we start the video, a quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor and this video is just a presentation on my personal research and not a recommendation to buy or sell Verizon stock. With that being said, let's start. So Verizon is currently trading at about $54.23. 52-weeks high is $61.95 and 52-weeks low is $53.83. So that means the stock is currently trading at about 13% below its 52-weeks high. In this particular video, we'll go over their business overview, that is their revenue, net income, and free cash flow numbers. Uh, we'll analyze their durable competitive advantage or their business mode. We'll check their balance sheet to see if they're in any kind of financial trouble in the short term or in the long term. We'll also check their management and uh, analyze some of the aspects of their management. We'll see their valuations, whether it makes sense or not. And finally, we'll look into their uh, investments for future growth. We'll try to see uh, where they're planning to go in the next 10 to 12 years. Okay, so looking at their business, we see that they had a revenue of $126 billion in 2016, and that grew to about $129 billion in 2020. So they have pretty much flat revenue over the last four or five years. Now, in terms of net income, they had a net income of $13 billion in 2016, and that grew to about $18 billion in 2020. So that's about 9% year over year growth in net income. Now, the jump in net income in 2017 is due to a tax adjustment that happened in that year. When you look at their free cash flow numbers, that's actually pretty consistent and very impressive. So in 2016, they had a free cash flow of $4.6 billion, and that grew to about $23 billion of free cash flow in 2020. So that's about 50% year-over-year growth rate in free cash flow. However, when you look at the free cash flow numbers for the trailing 12 months, you see that they have a negative $24 billion of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months. And this is primarily due to their spending in the recent C-band auctions. So they basically purchased the most C-band spectrum licenses for about $50 billion in the first quarter of 2021. Now, for those of you who doesn't know, C-band is considered to be the most optimum band for 5G network in terms of performance and coverage. So hopefully this investment will pay off for them in the long run. Now, if you look at their revenue segmentation, you will see that most of their revenues, that is 69%, uh, are actually coming from retail consumer sector. And then 24% from the business, 7% uh, from corporate and others. Uh, now, this 7% corporate and others, this actually includes Verizon Media Business as well, and that brought about $7 billion of revenue in 2020. Now, the concern I have regarding this segment is that they have been selling their media assets for uh, quite some time now, and the most recent sale is their Yahoo Business, which includes Yahoo Finance uh, and their AOL Business to the Apple Assets Management for about $5 billion. So this will definitely cause a decline in their media revenue. So we'll have to see how they close the gap in the lost revenues. They'll probably grow their consumer and business revenues to offset that, but we'll have to see how that unfolds. Okay, let's now analyze their durable competitive advantage or their business mode, and we'll primarily analyze this by checking their gross margins. So starting from 2012 up until 2018, they had a downward trending gross margin. Uh, although it was still a pretty high, above 57%, but it was in a downward trend. Now, starting from 2018, it started going back up again. In 2020, the gross margin was about 58, 59%. Now, I'd like to mention here that in 2018, they actually appointed a new CEO, Hans Westberg, who succeeded the previous CEO, uh, Loyal McAdam, who was the CEO uh, from 2011. So that might have something to do with the long-term decline in gross margins. Now, if you compare Verizon's gross margin with T-Mobile and AT&T, you will see that Verizon has a pretty high gross margin. Both Verizon and T-Mobile have pretty high gross margin. Uh, but AT&T has the lowest among the three. So, for example, for the trailing 12 months, Verizon's gross margin was about 58%, whereas uh, T-Mobile's 56% and AT&T's 52%. So, Verizon has a pretty good gross margin among uh, its peers. In terms of operating margin, we see that uh, Verizon had about 23% operating margin. 
uh, for net margin, they had about 14% net margin. So these margins look pretty good for Verizon in this uh, particular industry. Now we also need to check some qualitative aspect of their business uh, to check the economic mode. So we'll start by looking into the US wireless providers market share. And if you look at this market share pie chart, you will see that this space is primarily dominated by Verizon, AT&T and T-Mobile. And that's been the case for quite some time. So currently Verizon holds about 36% of the market share, which is pretty solid uh, position in this space. If you look at their retail churn rate, that is the number of people leaving their network for other carriers is pretty low at around 1.2%. And that's been the case for a very long time, starting from 2008. In recent years, that actually dropped even lower at 1.03%. So that's very solid for Verizon. That means uh, retail customers are not leaving Verizon for other carriers. So along with all these, um, they have a pretty decent uh, brand value. Uh, very high investment in 5G and a very solid network infrastructure. So all this means that they have a very strong mode in the telecommunication sector. Okay, let's now analyze their balance sheet to see if they're in any kind of financial trouble in the short term or in the long term. So if you look at their balance sheet, we see that they have a total current assets of about $35 billion. And in terms of total current liabilities, they have a liabilities of $40 billion uh, in the short term. So that's about $5 billion of deficit in terms of short term debt obligations. Now they have the cash flow uh, to uh, deal with this deficit, but this is not necessarily a great sign. So in terms of long-term debt obligations, they have a total long-term debt of $234 billion. If you compare that with their last year's free cash flow of $23 billion, you see that that's about 10 times of their last year's free cash flow. So that's not a great sign. Uh, if you look at their last year's EBITDA, which is about $47 billion, uh, again, about five times of last year's EBITDA. So that's not necessarily a great sign. I would be neutral on that uh, position. But if you look at the numbers, debt to free cash flow is about uh, 10 times. I'm talking about the long-term debt of $34 billion. So that's not a great sign. Debt to EBITDA, again, I'm neutral on that. Debt to equity is 3.12, I'm neutral on that. Interest coverage ratio looks good at 6.6. .6. So overall, this is not the best balance sheet. Uh, as indicated by credit rating from Moody's, they have a rating of BAA1, which is still an investment grade, but just above the junk status. So I'll be cautious regarding their financial situation going forward. Okay, let's now analyze some of the aspects of their management. So we'll start by reviewing the profile of Hans Westberg, who is the current CEO of Verizon. So before joining Verizon in 2017, Hans actually was the president and CEO of Ericsson. And you probably know Ericsson is one of the leaders in 5G technology development. And prior to assuming the role of CEO at Verizon, he was also the CTO at Verizon. So he is technically accomplished person. Um, only time will tell how uh, good he can lead this company in the future. Let's now analyze some of the other aspects of the management. So we'll start by checking how the management is uh, dealing with their debt load for a long period of time. So if you look at their net debt to EBITDA from 2016, it's consistently at around five. So this means that it will take them about five years of earnings to pay off all their debts. So this is not necessarily a great uh, financial situation for them. I would like to see a net debt to EBITDA ratio less than three. Uh, so I'm neutral on this position. If you look at their return on invested capital since 2016, it's been in a downward trend. In 2016, it was about 15%. And last year in 2020, it was about 11%. So it's going down, although the invested capital is going up over the same period of time. So this showing that they are not generating similar returns as they're increasing their uh, invested capital, which is not a great sign. If you look at their dividends payment since 2013, they have been growing their dividends, but in a very, very slow pace. So that's about 2.6% year over year growth in dividends payments. Uh, and if you want to check whether the dividends are covered by their free cash flows over the last three years, it's pretty well covered by their free cash flows. But in 2016 and 2017, they struggled and they had to probably borrow to pay off their dividends because they didn't have enough free cash flow in those two years. So going forward, I'll keep an eye whether they can generate this kind of free cash flows to pay off their dividends comfortably. Now in terms of share buybacks, you will see that, um, you know, they are not buying back their shares over the last few years. And they had a pretty high dilution in 2013, 2014. 
uh, after that it's pretty much flat so they're not buying back their share so they're not diluting their shareholders either and in 2013 the reason they had this huge dilution is because they actually bought back their stake in Verizon Wireless from Vodafone so earlier Vodafone was a part owner of Verizon Wireless but uh, in 2013, Verizon bought back that stake and for that reason they had to issue additional shares. So I don't see that kind of share issuance anytime soon in the future. Now if you look at the insider activities, one insider bought about $1 million worth of shares last year March, that is in 2020 March, at $53.47. And there are some insiders who are selling out their positions. Uh, and most of them are actually cashing out their salaries since they're paid in stocks they need to sell to cash out their salaries. Now overall my evolution of their management is uh, I'm neutral on this. Um, they have a pretty high debt burden and they're sh rewarding the shareholders in terms of dividends and share buybacks are not great so I'm quite neutral on their management at this point. Okay, let's now check some of the valuation metrics for Verizon. So if we look at their P ratio, currently it's sitting at around 11.20. That's actually in line with their historic price to earnings ratio. For forward P ratio, it's sitting at 10.12. Again, in line with their historic price to earnings ratio. Now, if we compare Verizon's valuation with AT&T and T-Mobile, we see that in terms of price to sales ratio, Verizon currently sitting at 1.69. AT&T is sitting at 1.11 and for T-Mobile it's 2.02. For price to book ratio, Verizon has the highest price to book ratio at 2.99. For price to earnings it's 11.20. For T-Mobile it's 43.90 and AT&T is not profitable so they don't have a price to earnings ratio for the trailing 12 months. In terms of price to free cash flow, Verizon has 10.40 price to free cash flow which is uh, very reasonable. AT&T has the lowest price to free cash flow of 6.79 but keep in mind they probably has the highest debt burden among all these three companies. Uh, for T-Mobile it's above 6,000 indicating that probably it's pretty expensive at this price. Now if you look at analyst recommendation, uh, six analysts rated this as a buy and 24 analysts rated this as a hold. And average analyst price target currently sitting at about $60. So which is approximately 10% above its current price of $54.23. All right, let's now check some of their growth prospects and growth areas. So I don't really have much of a good news for you guys in this segment. For the next five years, they're expected to grow only 3.5% year over year, which is not a very good growth number for my personal test. Now, they're expecting a 4% annual sales growth thanks to 5G. So to my understanding, 5G is their biggest revenue driver or expected to be their biggest revenue drivers for coming years. As the management sees uh, a growing revenue tailwind from its 5G investments in the coming years with full benefits kicking in by 2024. So that's to be seen. And if you guys know any other areas they're investing for future growth, let me know in the comment section and I'll try to follow up on that. Okay, so let's summarize the video. So I think significant revenue growth is very unlikely for Verizon. As you have seen, they're already operating in a very matured industry and it's very difficult to grow in this industry. They have a very reasonable business mode. As we have discussed, the US wireless um, sector is primarily dominated by Verizon, AT&T and T-Mobile. And I expect that to continue over the coming years. Their balance sheet looks okay. It's not the best balance sheet. They have a great rating of BAA1, which is just above the junk status. So I'll be cautious going forward regarding their financial condition. It's a fairly valued stock in line with their historic pricing. In terms of price to earnings ratio, it's in line with their historic valuation. They're paying a very good 4.5% dividends and it's covered by their free cash flow over the last two, three years. So I'll just keep an eye if they can generate this kind of free cash flow to cover their dividends. So personally for me, I have a very small position of Verizon in my retirement account entirely for their 4.5% dividends. So I'll keep an eye if they are capable of providing this dividends going forward. So if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know uh, in the comment section uh, your take on Verizon. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. And until the next video, good luck with your investment.